In low sloped roofing, drains should be placed where? At mid span between structural supports or near the structural supports? Go ahead and hit pause. The answer is at mid span because if you think about just the way that a roof would deflect uh, under weight, that's likely to be the lowest point over time. So ponding is more likely to occur in long spans due to structural deflection. And once it does, the weight of the water causes more deflection and it's like a unvirtuous cycle. And so the point in the roof gets lower because there's more water ponding on it and then more water accumulates to it and so forth until there's a catastrophic collapse. The code only allows for roofs that are at least sloped 2%, which is one quarter inch per foot. If you've accounted for this possibility of ponding by overstructuring it and with intentional ponding, then you're allowed to have a flatter roof. Uh, but generally, our minimum slope is 2%. Now, when do we want a flatter roof? If we have an intensive green roof, which is where the soil is directly on the roof, we might not want a slope for intentional water retention. We want to keep the water on purpose, so we're keeping it flat. An extensive green roof, which is a kind that has trays that have plants on the trays, but um, those trays sit independent on top of a more of a typical roof, then we're required to have a minimum slope at 2%. We can do uh, anything steeper than 10 degrees, but we need to take technical precautions to make sure that the green roof doesn't just erode away and the plant matter doesn't just kind of shear off. If we go beyond 45 degrees for our roof, we really can't have a green roof, and that's kind of our maximum. Now, for places like New York City, where uh, there's a good, where roofing, the roof area accounts for a significant portion of the catchment area of a rain event, we actually now have requirements that the water doesn't drain all at once from the roof. We're gonna intentionally pond the water in the roof or we're gonna uh, keep the water in containers inside the building and let the water out slowly into the stormwater system. So we call these intentionally ponding roofs blue roofs, and this is what they look like. Now, drains should be cleaned periodically, otherwise you have a situation like this. So basically we wanna have a maintenance program on the drains. And we don't want this kind of ponding because uh, something really horrible could happen and we could have loss of lives. So this brings us to roofs. And I start with the roof instead of the walls or, you know, some, some people when they cover these topics, they start from the bottom up. So they start with foundations and work up. Other people kind of start with the walls because I think when we think about a building, we think about the walls. We'll say, oh, it's a stone building or a brick building or it's a metal clad building or a wood, wood sided building, glass building. But I think when a building thinks of itself, when it kind of pictures itself, a building would think of itself based on its roof because the roof is what's the horizontal span which requires much more structure. I mean, typically the roof is gonna be maybe three or four or five times thicker than the wall based on its span and based on the fact that it's horizontal. It's exposed to all the sunshine. It's exposed to much more rain and more UV. It has temperatures that range from near boiling in the summer to below freezing, and sometimes on the same day. You know, when we build a wall, we typically don't require that it be replaced during our lifetimes. But if we build a roof, oh, we can expect it to be replaced several times during the course of our career. Uh, so there's this kind of planned obsolescence with the roof materials that we don't really have with the walls. And I kind of see the roofs a little bit like the dentist, you know. It doesn't seem like it should be that big a deal, but it is, right? So if you're healthy through most of your life, you'll maybe go to the doctor. If you're lucky, uh, as I have been, you go to the doctor once every couple of years. And the doctor, that doctor is going to take care of everything, right? I mean, so it's anything that happens with your skin, your liver, your, all the moving parts of your skeleton, all the moving parts of your circulatory system, all the things that you think if you didn't know any better, it would be a really, really big deal. They kind of just work on their own, and generally they don't slow us down too much. But we go to the dentist like twice, even three times a year, and that's just to clean some bone that just sits there. And so I see the roof as the dentist. It requires a lot more maintenance, so it requires a lot more design attention. So next question, what is the slope of a 2 and 12 roof expressed as a percentage? Go ahead and hit pause. To find the percentage of any slope, 
we're going to go ahead and take the vertical distance and we're going to divide it by the horizontal distance. So we have a vertical distance of two units, it could be feet or inches, divided by a horizontal unit of 12, so 2 and 12. And so 2 divided by 12 is 0 0.17. So the answer is 17%. So we have two types of roofs, two kind of flavors of roofs. We have low slope roofs, what people call them flat roofs, they're of course not flat, they have a low slope. And those are any roof that's less than two and 12, less than 17%. Then anything steeper than that, we call a steep roof, and anything shallower than a quarter inch per foot, as we saw before, is generally too flat unless we take special structural precautions.